Jesus is the sweetest name I know, and he's just the same as his lovely name. That's the reason why I love him so, cause Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Oh, help me. And I love him. Yes, I love him because he first loved me and he purchased my salvation. On Calvary, Jesus, what's oh, the sweetest name I know, and he's just the same as his lovely name. That's the reason why I love him so. Cause Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Hallelujah. Praise God. They did something about that name. Amen. There's something about that name. You can't share the good news. You can't get to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and his Father without that name of Jesus. And recognizes what Jesus has done for you and I. He died on Calvary. He went to the whipping post. He was buried. And on that third day, he arose. He's not in the tomb anymore. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And he's interceding for you and I. Of course, we're down here now in our tribulations and trials. Uh, but he's fixing to take us out of here so we'll be with him. Amen. Like he said and he promised us. Where he's at, we're going to be all also. In my father's house of many mansions, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And where I'm at, you will be also. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've got to stay close. The enemy's coming and attacking. That's okay. Greater is he that's in us. And by the way, if you read the back of this book, we win. We win. It's already a done deal. It ain't if, when, where. It's done. 2,000 years ago, when our Lord hung on that cross, he defeated the enemy. Amen. Woo. It's done. I don't have to look back because uh, we're here today. Amen. It's done. Praise God. Let's look and see what God's Word says this morning. You know, by the way, I have a got a real good message. You folks need to know more about laying on hands tonight. I'm going to tell you what God's Word says. Laying on the hands. Amen. That's an awesome it's in God's Word. It's biblical. I believe it from the front to the back. Amen. And I believe it's God's Holy Word, inspired by God Almighty to His servants who put it down. Amen. Let's look and see what we're looking at today. You ever pray sometime you can't get your prayer through, something going on? You know why? You might have sin in your life. You got to clean it up. When you come to God to pray, hallelujah. Think about it. Let's look and see what God says about prayer today. And we need to pray, amen. He wants us to pray. It's a daily matter thing. And, and uh, Bill and I have a pray, prayer meeting last night. I said, we, we, <clears throat> we, we cry out to the Lord and, and talk to him. You know, I'm going to be on the lawnmower and talk to the Lord. I'm going to be up there in the barn messing around or in the cornfield or something. I'm going to be talking to the Lord. Because he loves me, and, I, and, and, and I, can, I can talk to him, amen? Think about it. And he's there. <laughs> Praise God. Let's look and see what God has for us. Answered prayer. You know, 
I got prayers going on right now. I got lost loved ones. How many got lost loved ones? We all got lost loved ones. I got prayer going on, and God will just touch them. You know, God will not come against a man or woman's will, though. Did you know that? If that man or woman decide they're going to go to hell and they're going to live like hell out there in the world, that's their choice. They can do that. But God has made a way out, praise God, when Jesus died on the cross for you and I. Jesus paid the price for you and I. And if we want to believe what he's done for us uh, and receive the salvation plan, the, the good news, the gospel to us, uh, he has given it to us. It's your choice. It's your choice. Praise God. I hear uh, Adam and Dennis talk to a man last night after he left us and got saved, didn't he? He made a choice. He made a choice. Praise God, the folks that took the gospel to him, and he said, yes, Lord, amen. That's powerful. That's very powerful. Let's go and look and see what. You know, but we as Christians got to seek the Lord. You got to seek him diligently, amen. Let's look right here and see what 11.6 talks about. It says right here, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. You got to have faith, what? That Jesus is real, that Jesus died on the cross, Jesus was buried, and Jesus uh, is alive, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. You got to have faith, amen. I gave some of you a homework last week about, uh, you know, when you get time to get in that faith chapter 11, and you'll see it, and you'll see some of those, uh, of those generals, our brothers, uh, that had faith, and they moved mountains in their lives. Uh, amen. Think about it. Let's look right here. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently uh, seek him. We got to have faith. Uh, amen. I'll tell you right now, when I become a Christian, I had faith. Uh, I knew he was real. Hallelujah. Because he come right in here and I felt his holy presence. You did too. Amen. Now the devil come to you and he'll lie. He'll lie to you. He said it didn't happen. You you, you, uh -uh, he'll lie to you. Think about it. I remember one time I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I had to have the baptism. You know, I got a buddy. He's a he's a good old Baptist boy. He's got the fire on him, but he ain't, he he don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But he's got the fire on him. Uh, you, you don't have to have it to be saved, but God wants you to have it so you'll be endued with power from on high. I would have never witnessed to nobody or read my Bible every day or go to the missionary field or do the things that God has uh, uh, me doing now if I didn't, haven't got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I needed it, okay? But I remember when I first got it, I, I'll run it by you. And the message is on prayer tonight, amen. I mean, this morning. But I, I remember uh, I went up Channel 16 up there, man. They laid hands on me. They cast demons out of me. Can you imagine that? I, a nice guy like me having demons in them, huh? Oh, yeah, demons, I had them, they come out too, amen. Jesus cast out demons all the time in his word. Look at his holy word, amen. You know, you can get involved and get his stuff out there, and you can get demons on you. I, I remember John Hagee used to preach, you know, he said, you know, I, I get these people, and they come, and I counsel with them, and they say, uh, John, I got fear on me. And I'm not saying everybody, uh, we all have fear sometimes, but God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. But John Hagee would start talking to him and ask him a little bit, say, well, listen, uh, what you got in your house? Uh, do you look at these old horror movies and get in witchcraft uh, movies and all of that kind of stuff? Uh, well, no, and, and some of them would say, yeah, 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 I do that. He said, well, no wonder you got fear in your house. You're bringing it in there. You got to watch what you watch on TV. You got to be able to turn it when you need to turn it. There's a bunch of cussing and stuff going on there. Turn it. There's uh, sex and all of that stuff going on there, r running around. Turn it. Amen. And there's stuff going on there, and you know it's not right. The Spirit of God in you, you tell you it's not right, and you get out of it. You got to have a little bit of discipline yourself. You got to ask God to help you. Uh, pray God help me to be able to be pleasing to you I want to be pleasing to God amen I want to live a holy life hallelujah and I tell you right now I slip up every now and then but I get back on my knees and say God forgive me I'm sorry amen we got to repent ain't we think about it let's go a little bit further right here and look God said but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. BRNM had a prayer meeting last night. They were diligently 
seeking the Lord. And he showed up, didn't he, B.R.? He's an on-time God, y'all. That's who he is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes you might be praying. You can't be praying uh, wishy-washy like the waves out there. Whoosha, whoosha, back and forth. Man, you pray, you better solid to seek the Lord and say, Lord, I need you on this right here. Would you help me? Amen. Think about it. God's an awesome God. Let's look. But without faith, I pray and I, I believe God uh, uh, hears my prayer and I pray in his timing on certain things. He'll answer my prayer. I've had that happen. I've had that other thing happen too. Like, you know, I prayed about something before that's going on or whatever. And God, uh, it's like McDonald's, man. He answered. Don't that feel good? I remember when I first got baptized in the Holy Ghost, man, the power of God's on me and I pray and it happened like that. But as I got more mature in the Lord sometimes, it didn't happen like that. Amen. Back to the story I was telling you about uh, when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost up there at Channel 16, the power of God come on me and I spoke one word. The man said, uh, you, you know, you got people you got to forgive, and then people come up there like a TV screen, and they flashed out. They flashed out. You got to forgive them. You got to forgive them. And I forgive a bunch of people. I got everything right in here. And when that happened, I said, Rick, uh, you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost? And I said, no. You know, I got demons cast out of me. I forgive. Oh, that's a hard one, ain't it? We spoke to forgive. I forgive all them people. Some of them been embedded a long time, and I forgive. And uh, so he said, uh, Rick said, uh, this man once said, you ever been baptized in the Holy Ghost? I said, no. I went up there. I didn't care if I died or not. That's that's where I was at, y'all. I said, God, you can take me if you want to take me, or I'll give you 110% now, not 98%. I'm yours, whatever you want to do. And when I said that, <laughs> you got to submit to him. Amen. My whole world radically changed because they said, Rick, you ever been baptized in the Holy Ghost? And I said, no, but I want all God's got. And, man, they laid hands on me, and I spoke one word. I've told you all this before. But I went down to Myrtle Beach. Uh, I was in a motel that morning, the first morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. I jumped out there and went on the balcony, and I never read my Bible. I went to church. I was Baptist for 15 years. I never read my Bible. I just went to church, throw the Bible down. Man, I jumped up 5 o'clock. I went out there on that balcony, and, man, I opened that Bible up, and it come alive to me like never before because God gave me some power. And I started reading this and, and, and looking at that Bible, and it was awesome. That's like the first time I ever really read the Bible. I was reading it and consuming it, man. And I spoke one word the night before in tongues, and I was on that balcony, and there was people jogging about daybreak down the beach, you know. Man, I started speaking in tongues, and I couldn't shut up. And I had my hands raised up on that back, and I was shouting and praising God. I done got me something new. If you, if God had given me a, a brand new Cadillac, it wouldn't have been what I got. Man, I was a praising God and worshiping God, and, and I was speaking in tongues on that back, and then people running by like this. What's, what's this dude got, got going on here? Man, they don't realize the gift that God gave me. Amen. But I won't ever forget old, uh, my brother Roy, he come to me and said, Rick, now, I got healed, set free, delivered, on fire for the Lord, baptized in the Holy Ghost. And my brother Roy said, now, Rick, now, I want to tell you something. And about, you know, a few weeks, I ain't going to tell you exactly when, but the devil's going to come to you and he's going to lie to you. He's going to tell you you didn't get none of that. You didn't get your healing. You didn't get baptized in the Holy Ghost. That didn't happen. He tried to damper the fire, okay? So it's about three months. Man, I was on fire. I had to fire. God's got me in this for some reason, you know? And I had to fire, man. I was on fire. And I, I'd go to work. I worked in Spartanburg, and I lived down here in Piedmont. And so I'd go to work, man. I'd be praising God, and I had these FBI glasses, you know, sunglasses. And I'd be praising God, hallelujah, and I'd be just crying. <laughs> Going up the road, had them sunglasses on, nobody would see me. <laughs> praising God. But anyway, I was going up the road there, and the devil said, you didn't get healed. I mean, he, we talking, okay. You didn't get healed. You didn't get baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you didn't get that. I said, devil, you a liar. You a demon from hell. And let me show you what God did for me. Man, that devil run off of me, and he ain't been back to tell me that no more. 
That's been about 35 years ago. I'm telling you, that happened going down the road, man. Me and him had it out. I gave him a right cross. Boom. I knocked him out on that one. <laughs> Let's get back in the message here. That's part of it, though. You and I are a child of the king. And one of the benefits and packages that you and I have is we diligently seek God. We can pray to God, okay? And he hears our prayer. I mean, you know, you know I, I remember one time Billy Graham, he was being interviewed. Billy Graham loved the Lord, I tell you. He was being interviewed, okay? And uh, the interviewer said, well, listen, Billy, how do you know that God is real? And Billy said, I know he's real. I said, how do you know, Billy? He's on national news. Sir. He said, because he spoke to me this morning. And that interviewer backed off and said, okay. <laughs> said, uh, I was with the Lord this morning. He spoke to me. Don't it make you feel good when, he, when you hear his voice? Now, you don't get it all the time, but sometimes you, you'll know that you know when he's talking to you about something, okay? You'll know. Let's go right here and look. But without faith, you've got to have faith as he's who he And we've got to keep our faith built, y'all. We've got to encourage each other and see what God's Word said and just bask in it and keep it because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy it, and he's doing more of that recently than he ever has because he knows his time's short. He's got enough sense to know it. He's, he, he sees that we're fixing to have a one-world uh, uh, economy out there and everything, and the dictators and, the, and the, uh, the Roman Empire is rising back up like the Bible said it would do. That's the sign that the king of kings is fixing to get us out of here and the Antichrist step on the scene, and when he does... The great tribulation will start. We'll be in heaven, though, because God did not account us to wrath. And by faith, I believe that, don't you? I believe that. Look at right here. Let's go a little bit further right here and see uh, what the Word says. we got to please God. Amen. I want to please God. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we received of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that's pleasing to him. I pray a lot of time, God, I want to be pleasing to you. Whatever you want me to do, let me hear you. Let me know the direction you want to go. I want to be pleasing to you. You know what you got to do as a Christian? And it gets, you got to live a holy life. If you're a Christian, you got to live that life. You got to get in the word. You got to know who you are as a child of the king. And you got to, if, if his word abides in you and, and you in him, you can ask what you will. But let me tell you this. This day and time, you better live a holy life because he's fixing to come back. And how do you live a holy life? You get in God's word and you see where it says don't do this or do this or do that. And he's not a dictator. He just told you things that's going to help you in your life. That's why he put it in there. And you live a victorious life. You've got to obey his commandments. Amen. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. And whatsoever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandments. Well, there it is right there. You live a holy life, keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Amen. Praise God. Let's look. Uh, we're in here today worshiping him, ain't we? That's pleasing to him because we're unit in unity and we're praising God and we're worshiping him in here uh, today. Amen. Let's go a little bit further out here and look and see. Uh, uh, in, uh, we got to ask according to his will now. There's a little something to this, you know. When you start asking God and say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasing you. I'm obeying your commandments. I love you. Praise God, uh, Lord. Uh, but I want a brand new four-wheel drive pickup truck with a big motor. And I, I, I want all the bells and whistles, Lord. You think that's God's will? Now, if I was in a position where I needed a vehicle and I'm humble and meek, he'll help me get what I need. But it might not be a giant four-wheel drive pickup truck uh, with all the bells and whistles. Eh? When you ask, you've got to ask according to God's will. 
Amen. God, anoint me to preach today. God, you said your word wouldn't go void. God, you said you'd never forsake me. you never leave me. That's his will, isn't it? Let's go a little bit further. You know, you got to look out the flesh. You know, it might want to get into a little greed there, okay? Or the flesh might want to rise up there and lust after something you don't really need, you know? It's kind of like I like to explain it like this. If my son come to me when he was about that big, said, Daddy, I want a 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson, Daddy. Let me have it. I want it, Daddy. I'm your son. Let me have it. You think Daddy's going to give him that 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson gun because he's this big? God, I mean, the Daddy knows uh, that boy ain't got, uh, he ain't mature enough to have anything like that, and he ain't going to give it to him. Amen? Think about it. But now when that boy gets big and mature something like that daddy's try to help him sometimes maybe as a gift or something like that that's the way god is with us amen what if you prayed to god and you still a young christian say god you give me all this money and let me be a millionaire and i'll do this and i'll do that god might say you ain't ready to handle a million dollars he might look at you and say you can't handle a million dollars because it would get in lust of the eyes and the flesh and get into pride and you could leave me there's a lot of iffy stuff in there, ain't there? Amen. You see what I'm saying? God knows what we need. He know, you know, he said he would provide for us. He provides for those birds out there, doesn't he? I tell you, them birds eat at our house, they eat every day. We try to help them a little bit, but if we didn't give them bird seed and some of the stuff, uh, them hummingbirds and all that stuff, you know, God will provide it anyway. Amen. Think about it. He loves us that much. He knows we have needs of certain things. Amen. He knows that. Let's go a little bit further here. And uh, look, uh, it says right here, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen? If it's according to his will and you have a need and it's there, something like that, get in there and pray and ask God for it. He's a God that provides our needs. Amen? Think about it. Think about it. He provides our need. Think about it. Amen. Now, if we're going out there and mismanaging something that he's given us or whatever, he ain't going to give it back to us if we can't manage it right. Ain't that right? He gives us our finances, our health, our homes, all of this stuff. we got to do our part. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. I tell you one, he'll really hear, Lord, I want you to save my family, all my children, God. I want you to save my grandchildren, God. I want you to take my grandchildren that's messing with alcohol and get them out of it, God. I want you to purify them. I want you to draw them to the cross like you draw me to the cross, God. Have mercy on my family, God, and save them. Thank God I hear you. You hear that? Amen. But guess what? You might have prayed your whole life. But don't quit praying. But it's entirely up to their will too. But you can live a life that's an example to them and they can see what joy and peace that you have that the world don't give you that joy and peace, that God give you that joy and peace. And they'll see your dedication and your uh, commitment to God Almighty and that will have a great influence on our families. Did you know that? I have family to write me little letters and stuff. We're so proud that you and our family are this and all of you know. Come on, get closer to God. Come on, get deeper with God. Hallelujah. You can have what I got. Amen. Think about it. Think about it. Let's go. Look here. If we know that he hears us, what serve we ask? We know that we have the petitions we desire of him. Let's go a little bit further and look at God's holy word. Think about it. In John 16, the word of God, it talks about you got to believe that he is, amen. It says right here, and in those days we shall ask, to, in, in that day you shall ask me nothing. Burly, burly, that's truly, truly. I say unto you, who, whatsoever you shall ask the Father, in whose name? You ask the Father what? In whose name? You ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. When you pray, you always pray, Father. God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, you always pray. You say, Father, 
in the name of Jesus. You always put the name of Jesus in there. You cry out because that's your authority to the Father. Amen. Now, let me give you a little example right here. You want to start off, this is a kind of an example of a prayer. Our, uh, Matthew 6, 9 through 13, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He's the king. Thy kingdom come. I want his kingdom down here, don't you? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread. And uh, forget not our trespasses uh, 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 as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. That's a good way to start it out. And then you always, always when I try to pray, first thing I do is praise him. Lord, I praise you this day. I worship you this day. I submit to you, God. I humble down to you, God. I praise you, God, in Jesus' holy name. And then I confess to him, Lord, forgive me. If I've sinned in anywhere in my life or something going on, I ask that you forgive me, God. I want to be honest and I want to be humble with you because he knows anyway. If you think you're doing something and you're getting away with it, you ain't. <laughs> you think you got it hid, you ain't. He knows everything. You got to be honest and humble with the Lord when you pray. You ask God Almighty, you know, I confess, Lord, I, I did that or I was mean to that person. God, forgive me, God. Or, you know, all kind of stuff, you know. Think about it. And then you thank him for all that he's given you. See, there's some little, little. you see you see what we're doing here? We're confessing, we're praising him first. I'm just giving you a little example. Uh, you praise him first when you start praying, Lord, I praise you and worship you this day. Hallelujah, I honor you. Confession is made, God, forgive me for my sins this day. Lord, I want to be humble before you, God, in Jesus' name. And then you go in there and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for my home, my family, my job. Everything belongs to you anyway. And I thank you for it. I thank you for blessing me, God. I know that you bless me, and I thank you for that. Amen. And then you go down there and you make your request known. God, I got this going on over here, and I ask you to help me with it. Amen. God, I'm going to preach this morning. You said you'll never forsake me. You'll never leave me. You said your word wouldn't go void. I claim that this morning, God. You claim, I mean, you said, God, if you call me to preach the gospel, God, I'm obeying what you said. Amen. He hears that prayer and he answers that prayer. I see God many times answer prayer that we have uh, when we have our services. It's him. It's him. Amen. Think about that. Now let's go a little bit further right here. You got to ask for according to His will, and some of that you know. We in the, in the Gospel of John. Let's look right here. Ask in faith, not wavering. Uh huh. Look at here. Oh wait a minute. Let's go back. I had that scripture. I didn't read that. Did I? Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Asked and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. That's a good one right there. Ain't you? you ever pray to God and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt He heard your prayer? And don't it make you feel good? And man, your joy. He might have told you something a long time ago and it comes to pass now. Your joy, recognize what God has done for you. Amen? Recognize what he's done for you. I, I tell you right now, I'm not letting the devil steal my joy. The devil tries to steal your joy every day. You just dig your spurs in. Say, I'm keeping my joy. I'm going to be happy and I'm keeping my joy. Amen? The enemy will try to take it and and... And all kind of junk, you know. Think about that. You get around somebody that's negative all the time or comes at you negative, that can jump off on you. Think about that. Start praising God and worshiping God. You want it to be a positive thing. Look at right here. But let, you know, that's why a lot of our police force, thank God for our police force. Our police force is around negative stuff all the time. And it gets them guys, some of them. It really does. So you lift our police force up because they're around all of that bad stuff all the time and it starts getting on them. Man, they need to be lifted up in prayer and let the joy of the Lord get a hold of them. They risk their lives. I'm just using them as a good example uh, of our lives. Amen. Look right here. Uh, it says, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. If any of you like wisdom, let him ask the, of God that giveth it to all men liberally and unbridled not, and he shall be given him. I tell you right now, I've used that verse a lot of times. Lord, you said, uh, if I like, who he likes wisdom to pray, and you give it abundantly. Lord, I, I've used it in my job, in my uh, spiritual walk with the Lord as a, as a pastor and all that. Lord, give me intellect, wisdom, and knowledge. I want to know that I know this right here, or help me to learn this right here, you know. 
God gives it to you. He'll give it to you. You asked him. You got something going on. Look right here. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers like a wave of the sea, it driven uh, with the wind and tossed about. Tossed. You ever think about that? If you pray, Lord, do this for me, you know, and you're kind of wavering. Well, okay, Lord, if you don't want to do it, you know. You know what I'm saying? Not wavering, solid. Lord, I praise you and I worship you, God, and I ask God that you move on my behalf in this situation. Amen? Let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Now let's look. Uh, I like this word, don't you? We spoke to seek God. The word said, for let that man that think he shall receive anything of the Lord. For let not that man. If you're wavering in your prayer, you ain't going to receive nothing. You can forget it. Look at here. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You got to believe that God is. And I got, I'm going to tell you flat out, sometimes my faith is stronger in areas of my life than other areas of my life. It is. My faith's strong. I know he baptized me Holy Ghost. I know he saved my soul. I know he's my Lord and my King. But there might be something else going on that uh, I'm not strong enough in that faith. I keep, I keep praying. And I stand on it. Amen. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. Build your faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Faith come by what? Hearing the word of God Almighty. And we got to seek uh, carefully. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Was that what I've been saying? Live a holy life. You got to have it. God said so. Looking diligently lest any man fail, uh, fail of the grace of God. Oh, you could fall by the grace. Look at here of God. Lest any man, any root of bitterness springing up and trouble you and therefore many be defiled. I tell you right now, that root of bitterness is an awful thing. You got to clean your, you know, I, I, uh, uh, you, you ever go to the garbage dump maybe once a week or something like that? Can you imagine the garbage that we can accumulate? You, you, you know, every week, man, you get the, we have to go to the dump down at my house, but, you know, some of you in the city and stuff around here, you, they come by and pick it up. But, man, you, we got we can get the garbage, can't we? Well, that's the same way in our spiritual walk. We can be out there in the world. We get garbage. Uh, you need to clean up and be ready. Amen. Praise God. Like us guys yesterday, we prayed for some guys, uh, uh, people on the street. And after we prayed, we cleaned up. We cleaned up. Amen. Because I, I don't want that garbage on me, do you? Amen. But we as Christians have to clean up too. Think about it. I want to clean up, Lord. Look here. Looking diligently, lest any man fail the of uh, the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Let's look at the Hebrews right here. Lest there be any fornication or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. You know, Esau had it made. You know that? His uh, Abraham, Isaac, yeah, Isaac. His father Isaac, I had to get that together there, you know. His father Isaac had Jacob and Esau. But guess who? The firstborn, usually the stuff goes to the firstborn. Did y'all know that? And I won't go into all the story about that, what happened there, but I want to tell you this. Oh, Esau, you know, he was a man of the field out there, and he was a hunter and all that, and he was starving to death. And he come in there to, to old Jacob, and Jacob had some morsels and was cooking some stuff. And he told uh, Esau, give me something, I'm starving to death. I'm dying. He must have been dying, you know, been out in the field a long time or whatever. But he said, give me, give me, give me something to eat. And old Jacob, witty little, little dude, he wasn't perfect either, was he? <laughs> witty little dude said, okay, you give me your birthright, I'll give you some food. He said, you can have my birthright. I don't need it if I die. I'm just using maybe what he said, you know. You can have it. He gave his birthright. He had it. He had all the blessings that was going to come from his father and all that. He gave it away. And that happens out there a lot. People get the power of God on them. They, they save. They follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And they can throw it away. It's your will. It's your will. Amen. And so Esau, what did he do? He threw his birthrights away. He was going to inherit all that stuff from his dad. But 
because he gave it away. Look at here. Or you know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. You know, his father, what happened to Jacob? R Rachel, his mama, brought him in there and he put a deer hide on his arm because so, uh, Esau was a kind of a reddish, hairy man. And so Rachel said, listen, I want you to go there and your father can't see good and I want you, you to uh, let him lay hands on you and give you speak the blessing over you. Okay? We're going to talk about laying on hands tonight, by the way. Y'all be, be here if you can. But look here. So, oh, uh, uh, Jacob, he said, you go out there and you kill a deer and you come back and you feed it to me. And so he, he put a deer hide on his arm right there, okay? So here comes old Jacob in there and said, Father, here's a, uh, here's the deer that you requested, the the, 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 the the supper that you wanted. I got it right here. And I think old Jacob said, yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, not Jacob, but Isaac. He was the father. Isaac said, listen, you sound like Jacob. And said, here's your food, uh, father. And so he said, come over here closer. He couldn't see good. So he grabbed his arm and he rubbed it. That old deer hide there, and it was hairy, okay. And so... Isaac laid his hand on Jacob and gave him the blessing. Y'all see that? Esau gave it up, though, didn't he? Come, come down to it. He gave it up to him. Well, we know that afterwards when he would inherited the blessing, it was rejected for he found no place of repentance through he saw it carefully with tears. I think that story, I mean, some of that I just told you, I ain't, I ain't read it in a while, but that, that's a little bit of it. <laughs> that the trial of your faith being much more precious than the gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Salvation is our faith. Amen. Think about it. God's done it. Uh, whom having not seen you love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice and joy unspeakable full of glory. Now, you know, that's the first thing people come at you, though. You seen Jesus? You seen God? And I always like to tell them, you seen your mind? Now you got one? I think that works real good, don't you? <laughs> Look at right here. Let's look at this number nine here. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Think about that, y'all. Now, right here, here's another little good one right here. You won't have this answered prayer and everything. Look right here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and you shall, it, it shall be done unto you. See, you got to do something, too. you got to be like a lawyer. You get in God's holy word, and you uh, find ever what's going on in your uh, life that, that's happening, and you say, Lord, your word said, uh, whatsoever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven, God, and I believe your holy word. Amen. i tell you right now, he said, if uh, right here, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will. So you can't just uh, go out there and start uh, asking and hollering and stuff. You got to abide in Him and you got to keep His word in you. Amen. You got to uh, uh, go back to the Lord. Lord, Your word said. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, this person, uh, demons, got, demons is on them. We want them to stop or whatever. You said what? So ever we bind or be bound in heaven. Amen. Your word said that. It's, I'm abiding in You and Your words in me. God, I ask to, you move on this behalf for this person. Amen. There's a lot there. You can be like a lawyer. You can be surprised how God will give you wisdom and knowledge, His holy word. The deeper you get in God's word, the stronger you get. Amen. I'll tell you right now. Let's go. And uh, remember that one right there. I'll never forget the man that preached that first time I heard it. It was over there at uh, the Assembly of God that we was going to over there on uh, Ferris. And his name was Pastor Terry, and he preached on it. If, if, you, if, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, that's what you will, and you shall, it be, shall be done unto you. I remember he preached that, and I ain't, never, I ain't never forgot it. It just got in my spirit. Amen. Abide in him and his word. Hallelujah. Now let's look at one other scripture right here. This one right here is kind of tough. God won't hear you if you got sin in your heart. Look at here. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. 
Y'all see this? So I'll tell you one thing that I have found over the years. First thing, when I start praying to God, I say, God, forgive me for my sin. If I've sinned against you and I've done something or I know I've done it, I repent. You said if I confess my sins, you're faithful and just forgive me my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Amen? But I tell you right now, uh, when I go to the Lord, I always say, Lord, forgive me. If I got anything that's outstanding or ain't done something or said something to somebody wrong or something, I want you to forgive me because I want to be pleasing before you. Then I start praying to God and asking him, uh, you know, I praise him, uh, I confess to him, I thank him, and I make requests known to him. That's how you start praying to him. You know, there's a little few things you got to do, and I'll tell you one biggie you got to do, and it's hard sometimes. What is that? If your brother or sister sinned against you and hurt you and got you upset, you're supposed to forgive them. Now, I tell you, sometimes they don't need forgiving, do they? Sometimes they might have done something so bad they don't need forgiving, but that ain't your problem. Your your problem is if you got, if they done it against you and you know beyond a shadow of doubt and you angry at them and whatever, you do what you're supposed to do and God will handle it. You put it in his hands when you say, Lord, I forgive them. I pray you'll bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. And the tormentors will leave you, and you'll feel really good. Man, I, I, I can preach about the tormentors. I know I had them for seven and a half months one time. I know what I'm talking about. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you right now, though, boy, when I forgave the ones that hurt me, man, it's like something lifted off my shoulder, and I got peace and joy back. Hallelujah, praise God. And I didn't worry about it because it's in God's hand. He said, I will replace that the Lord. Vengeance is mine. But I didn't do it for that. I done what he said to do. He said, forgive them. And when I forgave them, whew, took it off of me. Amen? Ah, man, I've been sleeping good ever since. Amen? Think about it. You got... Somebody's hurt you and it's dwelling on you. Got to just you got to do what the Bible says. You got to forgive them. If you want your prayers answered, you better forgive them, because you ain't gonna get them answered. You got that in your heart. What did it say? If regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I want that open channel, don't you? I want God to answer my prayers and hear my prayers because I'm a man of God. You're a woman or a man of God, and you've got family that needs help or you need help or something going on. I want God to hear me because I know nothing's impossible with him. Amen? Think about that. Every head bow, please. Every head bow. You in here this morning and you need to rededicate your life or you need to be saved, just raise your hand. I'll pray for you anywhere okay i'm going to ask you another question in here you want your prayers heard this week uh, i want to ask you a question uh, do you have unforgiveness in your heart for somebody it's hanging there and you know it is uh, i'm going to ask you right now uh, this uh, morning i ain't going to ask you to raise your hand you know who you are i just want you to say lord i choose to forgive them you they might not be worthy to forgive but i want you to say lord i choose to forgive them amen and I'm going to add a little icing on the cake and say, Lord, I pray you'll bless them. You do that. You've done your part, and you put it in God's hands. And then, guess what? As you pray this week or, or as you pray, God's going to hear your prayers because you don't have that uh, standing between you and God, okay? You asked in whose name? You asked in Jesus' name. Somebody's hurt you, you just say, Lord, I choose to forgive them, God. You know, when you do that, God's going to move on your behalf. You might have sickness in your body this morning. If you got sickness in your body this morning, you want God to heal you. You said that uh, forgiveness prayer. God's hearing your prayer right now. I want you to pray right where you're at. Right where you're at, I want you to pray. You got something going on in your life, and you know it, uh, and you want God to help you with it. You get your area cleaned up to be pleasing to God. You've asked God, you've told him, I forgive those people who hurt me, God, and I give you praise, and I give you worship, God, and God, forgive me now, God, where I've sinned against you. God, forgive me. I want a clear, open uh, uh, channel here between uh, uh, you and me, God, and, and God, I want to uh, thank you uh, for the blessings you've given me, and God, uh, in Jesus' name, uh, Lord, I ask you to help me in this area in my life or help my family in Jesus' name.
Father, I pray in the name of Jesus you touch each and every one that's here this morning. I lift them up to you, God. I pray that everybody in here this morning will get answered prayer this week like never before, God. I pray if there's something there that's been hindering them and their prayer life, God, I pray, God, in Jesus' name that you're going to move on their behalf now, God, because they're obeying you. They got you abiding in them and your word is abiding in them. You said to ask what you want. We're asking God to help us. Help us to live the life that you want us to live, God, in the holy name of Jesus. In the holy name of Jesus, God. And Lord, I speak blessings over everybody in here by the authority of Jesus Christ. You the blesser. You are the blesser. And we give you the praise right now. And those folks on the internet, I pray you'll touch them. I pray they receive this message. It's God's word. Hallelujah. Everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. It's good. Remember 430 Dominion.